speed I know, they got, they got stolen. They asked me to, uh, I, like I realized what I was doing. I said, oh, great, that's another one. So then they go, text or message us for your uh, payment. So I, I knew as soon as I messaged that for that payment, they'd have me. But I didn't do it. I blocked that for count. Scripture says, Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God or the people of God. Come on, let's rejoice about that. He so loved us. Oh, 
receive your goodness today. Amen.
Thank you. 
Lucy, you're going to play this song. so I can see Pastor Samuel.
service. We lift up this atmosphere. We lift up every visitor, every person that's here. Heavenly Father, we ask that you will descend like a fire in this place today. Lord, we bind up the spirit of distraction right now in the name of Jesus. And we call for a cease and desist to everything that would dare to try to deter and attract the attention from your message that you prepared today. So to speak and release a peace over this atmosphere. And I thank you, Lord, for building up this word and birthing it right before our eyes. God, I pray that we will be able to receive. And Lord, that it will take root and that we will be a blessing in what we have heard today. And Lord, that it is used in our lives to bring forth a hundredfold more. And I just thank you for your anointing over Pastor Dan. Just yes. blessings, blessings today. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Good morning, church. Good to see so many out here today. If you'd open your Bibles to Psalm 68. And keep your Bibles open because I'm going to have you turn to a couple other passages. You know the beautiful thing about hearing the word of, it doesn't just occupy time when you hear the word of God. It builds up faith. Yes. That's what the word says. That faith comes by hearing the word. And so every time you hear the word of God, your faith is built up. Amen. Amen. So today is Father's Day. And it's a day that we honor fathers. Amen. But I think it should be called Dad's Day. Because it doesn't take much to be a father. That's right. But it takes everything to be a dad. Amen. That's right. That's right. And some of us grew up with a dad that was a vital part of our upbringing, either living in the home or sometimes out of the home, but still a role model and a very present and positive part of our life. I think of Finian over here. Finian has been a, a great role model for his kids. Amen. 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 Those of us who had that kind of relationship with our Father are blessed. But there are many people and possibly some in here that didn't have that advantage in life. And one of the hardest roles in our society, Rich, could I have just a tad bit more volume? One of the hardest roles in our society today, I think, is that of a single parent. Now down just a little bit. <laughs> I'm so picky. The role of a single parent, which usually, unfortunately, falls on the mother. Now, a single parent by the death of a spouse is one thing, but single parenting because of an absent spouse is another thing. Mm -hmm. And then there's the single parenting even when both parents are in the home because the father will not assume his role as a parent. So. God, how many single parents do we have today? Just slip up your hand. Bless them. Lord. God bless all the Amen. single parents yes. who I believe have tried their best to raise their child or their children Amen. with the means that they have. Yes. And God bless all the fathers and stepfathers who have stepped into that God-given role of training up their children in a way they should go. But today I want to talk about a much neglected segment of our country. Today may be Father's Day, but for many, every day is Fatherless Day. And I was going to entitle this message Fatherless Day, but I instead went with this title, Dad Gone Lives. When the dad is gone, the lives of the children and the family suffer. And I think there's many of you who may be able to identify with that today, identify with a dad gone life. And if that's you, I have a verse from the word of God for you today, John 14, 18, where Jesus says, I will never leave you as orphans, I will come to you. Amen. So you just take that today. Because God has a heart for the fatherless. God has a heart for the foster child. God has a heart for the orphan, for the neglected, for the rejected. God has a heart for the abused. 
And here is our text today, Psalm 68, 5. A father of the fatherless is God in his holy habitation. Lord, I pray that today would be not only a day of celebration, but it would be a day of healing. Yes, yes Lord. Lord, I'm praying as I pray in the prayer room that you would be like the balm of Gilead today, soothing those hurts many have that carry over into their past, into their childhood, and probably from a fatherless home. So, Lord, anoint your word today, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I want to look at two boys in the Bible who live dead gone lives. One is found in Genesis 16. If you could turn there. Genesis 16. And we're going to talk about the dead gone life of Ishmael. <coughs> And in this story, her, her name is Sarai, it gets changed to Sarah, so I'm going to just refer to her as Sarah. Abraham and, Abraham and Sarah in their old age were promised a son by God. And like many of us, when what God promised looks impossible, or when what God promised takes long, too long to get it, we don't think that God can really deliver on his promise. And that's the position they were in. They really didn't think that God was going to deliver on their promise. So they thought they would help God keep his promise. And I know we're laughing, but we do the same thing. Since Sarah was barren, she chose one of her maids, an Egyptian woman named Hagar, to be the surrogate mother for her, and Abram would be the father. So she gives Hagar to, to be Abram's wife, and Hagar conceives according to the plan, but now Sarah is infuriated. And she basically tells Abraham to make a choice. It's either me or her. She wanted no part of Hagar, she wanted no part of the child that she was carrying, and she began to treat her harshly. So she, Hagar gives birth to a son, and names him Ishmael. Now there are many victims of that kind of a daggone life today. We're a step parent, and step parents many times get bad raps, but there are some bad step parents. Where a step parent wants nothing to do with their spouse's children from a previous relationship. And she, she or he puts so much pressure that the natural parent actually removes themselves from their children's lives. There are even cases where the hatred is so severe that the step-parent abuses the child without the natural parent being aware of it or not wanting to be aware of it. So Hagar says, drive out that woman and her son. They shall not be an heir. Drive them out. Now, Abraham was in a quandary. He didn't want to lose Sarah, and yet this was his child, even though he wasn't the promised child. It was still his child. But he caves in to his wife, kind of like Adam and Eve. He gives in to Sarah and says, Behold, your maid is in your power. Do to her what is good in your sight. So Abraham puts some supplies together, and he gives them to Hagar, and he sends both of them away. And the word of God says that they wandered in the wilderness. And I looked at that and thought, how significant is that? Because there are a lot of single moms today. There are a lot of abandoned children today wandering about in the wilderness with no purpose and no direction. Why? Because they had a doggone life. A dad gone life. Kind of felt like Hoss Cartwright right there. <laughs> He always said, Dad, burn it. <laughs> yes. But then the word says that an angel finds him in the wilderness and tells her to return with the child, which she does. But Ishmael never felt wanted in that household, and his father remained at a distance from him. But I want you to look at the effect that had upon Ishmael in Genesis 16. This is a sad commentary on a dad gone life. Verse 12, I put it up there for you. He will be a wild donkey of a man. 
His hand will be against everyone, and everyone's hand will be against him. He's an angry man. And he will live to the east of all of his brothers. So he grows up to be this angry, wild, unrestrained man. He will live in hostility to everyone around him. He lives on the fringe of society. He's an angry young man, and the anger is the direct result of being abandoned by his father. That's right. Yes. If they had social media back then, you would have seen his anger played out on the screen. You would have seen his anger against people in general, but especially the Jews, because his father was a Jew. And so he actually became a racist. His Twitter page and Facebook would reveal that hatred. And after he did something drastic, they would search back there and say, somebody should have seen the signs. Somebody should see the signs in society today. Most of it is a result of daggone lives. Ishmael's descendants became the Arabic people who have hated the Jews for centuries since. And it all came from a dead gone life. Think about that for a moment. All the turmoil in the Middle East would have never happened if there wasn't the dead gone life of Ishmael would have never happened if Abraham would have been the father to Ishmael than he was to Isaac. Yeah. It would have never happened if the stepmother and the stepbrothers would have accepted him. What a different world we would have had today. And let me tell you what a different world we would have today if it wasn't for some dad gone lives out there. Amen. Because dads have a vital role in how their children will grow up Preach and it. how they view the world. Preach it. The climate of the nation is reflected in the climate of the homes. Yes. Yes. Let me give you some statistics. According to the U.S. Census Bureau, 18.4 million children, that's one in four, live without a biological, a stepfather, or adopted father in the home. That's enough children to fill New York City twice. Oh, my goodness. That's wow. A lot. Research shows that a father's absence affects children in numerous negative, unfortunate ways. Fatherless homes account for 90% of all the homeless and runaway children. Fatherless homes account for 85% of all the children who show behavioral disorders. 71% of all high school dropouts are from dead gone homes. 75% of adolescent patients in chemical abuse centers come from fatherless homes. 85% of youths that are in prison are from fatherless homes. 71% of pregnant teenagers are from fatherless homes. 63% of youth suicide are from fatherless homes. 27% of single mothers were jobless for the entire year while taking care of their children. Men who grew up with absent fathers were more likely to become absent fathers themselves. Children without a father are four times more likely to be living in poverty than those who had a father in the home more likely to have confused identities and a leaning towards a homosexual lifestyle and other social disorders. Teen girls from fatherless homes are four times like, more likely to become pregnant before the age of 20. Children who live in fatherless homes are, listen to this, 279% more likely to deal drugs or carry firearms for offensive purposes. And this isn't a slam for some of you who may be absent fathers, because I'll tell you, I've got some fatherless children. And I've seen the way they've grown up. Sometimes we have to deal with our mistakes in the past. 
Come on, preach it. But it cannot be overstated the role that a dad has in their children's lives. Yes. Next, I want to look at the second boy. It's found in Judges 11. The dad gone life of Jephthah. How many ever heard of Jephthah? Judges 11. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges. And we're going to look at 11 verses 1 through 3. Now Jephthah the Gileadite was a valiant warrior, but he was the son of a harlot. And Gilead was the father of Jephthah. Gilead's wife bore him sons, and when his wife's sons grew up, they drove Jephthah out and said to him, You shall not have an inheritance in our father's house, for you are the son of another woman. In verse 3, and I put this up on the... So Jephthah fled from his brothers and lived in the land of Tob. And worthless fellows <coughs> gathered themselves about Jephthah, and they went out with him. Jephthah was raised in a fatherless home. His father Gilead was there for the fathering part. A lot of people are there for the fathering part, but not for the dad part. He wasn't there to impart anything of value to his son. He wasn't there for birthday parties. He wasn't there for graduations. He wasn't there for little league games. He wasn't there for father-son talks. Gilead was only there for a short time, and then only there for one thing. And then he was a dad gone. Verse 1 says that his mother, whose name isn't mentioned, his mother was a prostitute. But it doesn't say when she became a prostitute. I mean, when I first read this, and I preached on it a few times before, when I first read it, it looks like Gilead was married, and he went out and hired a prostitute but I'm really not sure that's what happened. I think that Gilead had a relationship with this woman for a period of time. And when he finds out that she's pregnant, she le he leaves her and abandons the child. So look at it from that point of view. And there were not a lot of employment opportunities for the woman in those days. So she turned to the only thing available to put food on the table, to pay the rent, and to care for her son. Because there were few, if any, options for her. She wasn't in that business, I don't think, because she liked it. I don't think there's many prostitutes who are in the business because they like it. And maybe it was her only way to make significant money. Maybe it was, maybe it was a... a support a drug addiction or alcohol addiction. But Jephthah's mother was in it because it was either that or death for her and her child. Because the man that was supposed to take care of them abandoned them. There are so many men who are supposed to take care of their children, but they rely on the social services. They rely on the church instead of taking up their father God-given duties. There was no welfare system back then. There were no food stamps available. So she, as well as Jacob, were victims of a dead gone life. And as a prostitute, she probably didn't come to many of Jacob's school functions. Prostitutes tried to stay clear of the other women as they were scorned at and looked down upon. She probably wasn't home much in the evenings either. And more than likely, she slept late in the mornings being out the night before. So Jephthah would have been left to himself to fend for himself and basically raise himself. Getting ready for school in the morning all by himself. He puts on some dirty, wrinkly, out of fashion clothes to the sneers and ridicule of the other children. Hurtful names were flung at him before he was old enough to know what they even meant. Names that kids were repeating that they were hearing from the parents. And I thought about poor Rudolph. 
<laughs> All of the other children yep. used to laugh and call them names. Yep. They never let poor Jephthah join in all the children's games. <laughs> so for much of his life, Jephthah was neglected by his mother and abandoned by his father. And that is the breeding ground of substance abuse and mental and emotional yes. problems. Yes. Yes. That's the breeding ground of violence and unlawfulness. Yes. So Je yes. Jephthah was born yes. with two strikes against him. And I would always tell my wife when we when we passed through the teen gospel mission, all these kids were born with two strikes against them. And I'm not blaming the mother again. I think she was doing all that she could, and in fact, the only thing that she could. The blame falls on the shoulder of Gilead, the father. Someone would call Jephthah an illegitimate child. But I would say instead that Gilead was the illegitimate father. We have a lot of illegitimate fathers today, and we are reaping the consequences of that in the decline of our society. Yes. Yes. Now, we can't be sure from the text if Gilead was married at the time of his relationship with this prostitute, or if he married after the relationship. But in any case, he's now married, and now he has sons by his wife. And the wife is told about the son from a previous relationship. And they at first agree to do what's right, and they bring little Jephthah into their home along with his half-brothers. He goes from a single-parent, dysfunctional home to a relatively home that provides for a relatively stable home, or so it seems. But I'm not sure that he, the adjustment was smooth. Sometimes when you're brought up one way and you're coming to another environment, there's, there's a social clash there. So I think the adjustment was very difficult because now Jephthah could no longer do as he pleased and he never really fit in. He was an outsider, and not only was he an outsider, but his half-brothers let him know, reminded him that he was an outsider. And verse 2 says, they drove Jephthah out, and they said to him, you shall not have an inheritance in our father's house, for you are the son of another woman. This is something that sounds similar that Sarah said about Ishmael. So his mother couldn't take care of him. And his father didn't really want him. And his stepmother, I'm sure, was not overly joyed at having him around. And his stepbrothers wanted him out. So little Jephthah was dumped on. He was picked on. He was kicked around for his whole life. And then we wonder how he turns out the way he did. We have, keep, we have quit teaching morals. We have quit teaching values to our children, and we expect them to grow up with morals and values. And now he, Jephthah, is a hurt, angry young man who flees from his family into the land of Tob, and he hooks up with some, what the Bible says, worthless boys. That means evil intending people. An angry, violent, street game they become. And they go out terrorizing and vandalizing anything and everything. And I guarantee you most of them in that gang, most of them were from daggone lies. I hate that word worthless. When I hear somebody say that person is worthless, I cringe. My wife will tell you that. I cringe. Because I don't label anyone as worthless. And this word worthless is not saying that they are of no value. It is saying that they have no value. They're not of no value. They have no value. They have no value for other people's property. They have no value for other people's rights. They have no value for life. They're worthless in that sense. 
And all of these dead gone lives are now thrown together. Isn't that amazing how that works? All these dead gone lives are thrown together in one pot of drugs and guns and violence. And Jephthah becomes the leader of this street gang. I call it the Tob Mob. Much of the violence we see today in New York City, Chicago. You know, there's so much killings in Chicago that nobody ever mentions about. Black lives never mention that. There's tons of black on black killing in Chicago every single day. There's tons of it in New York City every single day. And most of it are from street gangs, dealing yes. drugs, and yes. committing gun-related acts, violence, and murder. And many of those gang members have dead gone lives. Yeah. Yes. That's two amens. Thank you for us. Yeah. Fathers. Father's Day, yes, it's a day of celebration, but it needs to be a reminder of the important roles that we have is in our children's lives. Be a dad, not a dad gone. Fathers have a crucial role in the outcome, how the children are going to turn out. We have an epidemic in America of dad gone lives. And I suspect that many, even in here today, will fall into that. And Jephthah and Ishmael did nothing to deserve how their life was going. They suffered from a dead gone life. And there are more than a few who are suffering today because of the dead gone life. But our text says that God is a father to the fatherless. Yes. Amen. And Amen. let me tell you, it doesn't Amen. get any better than that. There's no better father than that. He's a father to the fatherless. Now let me tell you the rest of the story. First, the rest of Ishmael's story. Although Abram abandoned Ishmael, God didn't. And God didn't abandon the now single parent, Hagar, either. He finds him in the wilderness and he tells Hagar this, that he would bless her child. Even though Abram abandoned him, God would bless her child. He was going to multiply her descendants from Ishmael so that they would be too many to count. And verse 20 of chapter 21 says these incredible words that she gives some of you hope today. And it says, God was with the lad and he grew. He was a father to the fatherless. He didn't abandon Ishmael. And you know what else? As a father of the Arabs today, God has not abandoned them either. Amen. Even though we look at the Arabs one way, God still loves them. For yes. God so loved the world. Amen? Amen. And I want you to know today that God has not abandoned you today. You might have come from a fatherless home, but God hasn't abandoned you. He is a father to yes. the fatherless. Yes. Yes. And then the rest of the story of Japheth, Jeph, Jephthah. God not only had a plan and a purpose for Ishmael, but he had a plan and purpose for Jephthah likewise. Because God is always at work behind the scenes to bring something good out of your situation. That's what he was doing for Jephthah. He was working behind the scenes to bring something good out of his bad situation. Oh, he loves to do that. Because Jephthah was a leader of this street gang. He was actually, God was going to work it out. He was actually in preparation and training to become a leader who would deliver Israel. Amen. Life can be a training ground for a greater purpose. Yes. Yes. Some of you who have lived lives like Jephthah or Ishmael, God is going to use all that bad stuff that happened to you 
if you allow him to come out with a better purpose for your life. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. God will use your hurt to put you in a position to help someone else. I'm yes. just looking at Hallelujah. Kathy and Jeff right there. God's yes. going to use your hurt That's right. to put you in a position. Yes. Matter of fact, I, I share with Kathy, if you don't mind me sharing, Kathy, you don't know what I'm going to share. <laughs> I, I shared with Kathy last week, she called me up. And we were both kind of teary eyes. He was crying and, because I know what she's going through. And I says, Kathy, like it or not, God has given you and Jeff the Father's heart. Because you don't know what the Father's heart is until you go through what they went through. Yes. God so loved the world that he gave his son. Yes. Yes. They didn't give him their son. Ed didn't give his son. I didn't give my son. But we know what the Father's heart is. That's how much God loves us. Amen. Amen. So, Amen. Life, I'm going to say it again. Life can be the training ground for a greater purpose. And God's right. going to use your hurt if you allow him to put you in a position to help someone. That's why I'm in this position. Because God used my hurt as a training ground. Right. Yes. So Jephthah's chance comes. A door of opportunity. When he's requested now to lead an army. By who? By the same people who drove him out. Oh God has a sense of humor. <laughs> Exalting Jephthah. And humbling the stepbrothers. 18 years had elapsed between the time he was exiled and the time the very ones who exiled him came to ask him to become the leader. So the rejected now becomes the accepted and God has a way of turning bad situations around. Yes. 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 What the enemy meant, yes. my wife prays it all the time, what the enemy meant for evil, he will turn it around for good. And in all things, God will cause it to work together for your good. He's a father to the fatherless. Yes. yes. And some of you have been suffering from a dead gone lives, maybe all your lives, 18 years more or less, and you feel that God has forgotten you. But just as after 18 years, a door of opportunity was open for Jephthah, yes. there's a yes. door of opportunity open for you today. Yes. Hallelujah. Verse 29 says, Now the Spirit of the Lord came upon Jephthah. And the only way to have the Spirit of the Lord come upon you, <coughs> you have to be saved. Yes. yes. And he delivered Israel from its oppressors. He's a father to the fatherless. Scott and Abby, could you come? I want you to know that God I want you to listen to this very carefully. Your identity is not found in the one who abandoned you. Your identity is found in the one who has chosen you. Yes. Amen. Jesus Christ has chosen you. But you have to choose him. Is there anyone here today that will make use of this door of opportunity? Me. And come to Jesus. And unload at this altar. All that anger. All that hurt. All that pain. And Pastor Samuel, is it okay if I tell a story about you? You don't know what it is either. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> These guys trust me an awful lot. Surprise. Surprise. We were at a prayer, a pastor's prayer, and I just remembered. And he had some things in his childhood, and I don't remember what it was, or whether it was a fatherless thing, but there was some kind of hurts from his childhood. And I remember him coming for prayer. He sat in the chair. Remember the chair? Yes. Put the chair in the middle. And in that chair, released all of that pent-up anger. Yes. And all that pent-up hurt. Yes. That's what you can do. There's a chair at this altar. 
basically. Come to this altar. Some of you are hurting because you had a fatherless home or a motherless home, whatever it might be. And it's affected every part of your life because you allow the past to hinder your future. Jesus is calling you. Come to the altar and unload that anger, that hurt, that pain. Come to the altar and get free of it today. Yes. Today's the day of freedom. Yes. Yes. Come on, I know there's more people than that. That you've been you've been hurt by your upbringing, perhaps. Just come and say, Lord, I'm here. Your word says you're my father. Yes.
and have my wife come and pray for the single parents. So God, I thank you for these that didn't abandon their children as well. I thank you, God, that you have equipped them to be both a father and mother to these children. And God, the journey's not over yet. But I pray you give them a hope like they've never had before. A hope that they're not alone in this. That you've been there the whole time. I pray, Lord God, that you will continue to give them wisdom and discernment of how to help their children to be more like Christ. To help them to forgive. Because, Lord, you said if we don't forgive, you don't forgive us. And maybe that forgiveness right now has to start in the house. Maybe it has to start right here at the altar. Oh, God, help us to forgive those that have abandoned us. Help us to abandon those that abandoned our children. Help us to overcome every situation of the past, but let not the past dictate who we are or define us. Amen. It is today that we live for and the tomorrow that's yet to come. I pray for every one of their children more than anything else. Their children will be saved. I pray that they will be mighty men and women of God. And the yes, love that yes, they thought they yes. lacked will be found in the great I am, the Father to all. And God, I pray what Satan has meant for their demise will be the very thing that will strengthen them to be such amazing leaders, conquerors, oh God. Because Lord, you have a divine plan for every one of them. God bless these parents right now. And God, God bless parents as, as such. But most of all, Lord, Bless the fathers because they have the greatest impact on their children. More than a mother, I'm afraid to admit, but it's a truth. Impact these fathers to do what needs to be done because it's never too late. Maybe to apologize, maybe to get in touch with their children, but Lord, to give back, take back what the locust has truly stolen. God, I thank you that with you all things are possible. And again, all God's people say. Amen. Father, I want to lift up these who have been hurt ever since childhood yeah. by a parent who wasn't there. Yeah. And it was affecting everything about their life and where they are today. But again, Lord, I speak this to them that their identity is not to be found in the one who abandoned them. They have a new identity in Christ, the one who chose them. Yes. And so, Lord, I'm praying that you would begin to fill in those voids in their life and that empty spot in their life. And I'm praying, Father, that you would use all that hurt of the past. I pray that you would use it for a greater purpose today. Lord, that you would, like Jephthah, begin to prepare them for a greater purpose. And so, Lord, smooth and, and soothe those hurts, I pray in Jesus. Let it be a, let Father's Day be a, a, a great day to remember. That it's a day that that hurt was gone, that pain was gone. Yes. And so, Lord, we surrender them to you. Do your work in their life, we pray. Let them not have bad effects from a dead, gone life. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, everybody, and have a wonderful Father's Day.